The internet has long been regarded as the home of truly free expression, and most of us embrace it. However, I believe that with it comes a darker and far more destructive side. I'm referring, of course, to this. Hey, way to go, fatty. Yes, what a shot to the face. Apparently, the best way to get more views Don't on be angry, now, get over it. Is to trick perverts. I think people lean towards nastiness when they're anonymous. Everything she does is false. Retarded. Not one word Why she says that when you've got a face like a shoe. They're not there for the rough and tumble of debate. They are just there to insult, upset, annoy, disrupt. Uh, face uh, hide your chapstick or that fat girl will eat it all. I'm a historian by trade, but for the past year I've been writing a blog about history for a major news website. But what I found very surprising about my blog, and it's very uncontroversial, I assure you, is the amount of ire and vitriol I've received from the people who leave their comments in those little white boxes. And as a result, I'm really very, very worried about the level of online debate in this country. All these people are just writing under false names, there's no face, no picture, and they hide behind their anonymity, and they're therefore emboldened to say what they like, and it's normally deeply unpleasant. I'm surprised the Telegraph has a comment section. Why do you do it? Why do you subject yourself to it? I welcome the access, but what I don't like is the access being abused and people just shouting rudeness from my letterbox. I never read the comments. I don't, right. I don't care what people are, are, are saying, you know? It's just a, a, you know, for every nice thing that cheers you up, there'll be one or two that, that just break your heart. And the ones that break your heart are the ones that you remember. The internet may have given everybody a platform, but giving people a platform doesn't necessarily mean that they've got anything interesting to say. I mean, most of the stuff written in comments boxes is an absolute rubbish. Here's another example. I wrote a blog post all about Julian Assange. Like most historians, I've got very little time for Julian Assange. I think that what he's doing is ultimately skewing historical record for the long term because he'll encourage people to say things rather than write things down. But of course, as soon as you attack someone like Julian Assange, you get a whole list of people that have caused me an aggrandizing pillock. They tell me that I'm a moron and that I basically shouldn't exist. And I think at the moment, we've just got this swamp, this tide of morons who are just getting in the way and impoverishing it for everybody else. You get incredibly erudite people saying really interesting things, people who haven't been given a voice before. Right. And you also get people who in olden times would have written to you in red crayon. Or the only, Green Ink Brigade, yeah, yeah. Or only this time they don't even have to go to the trouble of buying the green ink. <laughs> they can just log on and, and insult you. So who are these people who infest the comments boxes with their idiocy? Well, there's a name for them. They're called trolls. And it seems to me that their only role in life is to annoy people and generally just lower the tone of debate. I get about 2,000 comments per blog. I would much rather have 500 quality comments than, right. than those extra 1,500, which are mostly general nastiness. And they're not helpful. They don't, they don't further the debate. Right. All right, so the other day, I was the victim of a load of unpleasant online comments. One gets used to it, but I, I thought I'd share a few with you, especially some really nice ones. For example, I had this young man called Adam, uh, who says to me, uh, Guy Walters, you're an tool, mate. My dream is to see you burning alive, begging for help. It's quite an image. Now, ironically, my new best friend Adam has forgotten the golden rule of how to be a troll, and he's left a trail online. We know his surname, so we can just Google that. And up comes his website, and on his web, oh, and a mobile phone number, which is fantastic. I think I'm gonna give him a call. Oh, Adam, hello, my name's Guy Walters. I don't know if you remember me, but we exchanged some tweets a couple of weeks ago. You called me a tool, and you said how much you wanted to see me burning alive and begging for help. You can't, you can't, you can't remember what it was about. Anonymity is a very important right on the internet. Sure. But, uh, you know, it's also up to individuals to try and be um, civil. Is that really how you think arguments should take place, how debates should take place, people just call each other I think if people are going to make nasty threats, they should be accountable for what they say. It should not be just a free-for-all where you can just insult people without any consequences. Don't you think that online debate can be held in a far more collegial and sophisticated way? Well, it's not. It's not. It's not sophisticated. Oh, you've apologised. You've apologised. You've just apologised. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. People have a certain level of manners, you know, in interpersonal relations, exactly. and I think what the internet has done is remove that. But yeah, yeah, I think, I think it is water under the bridge, and I'm now going to ring the other four million trolls in the world and try it with them. We'll see how we get on. All right, good to talk to you, mate.
Bye. We're calling it the American Liberty Tour, where we go to 18. One of the biggest problems with anonymity is that comment pages can be hijacked by pressure groups, corporations, government. So what do we do? We become digital activists. We identify the medium, we learn the medium, we manipulate the medium. It was printing presses then, it's the internet now. That's where we influence the hearts and minds of our fellow citizens. Anybody with an agenda can just summon up a load of trolls and push their opinion disproportionately heavily online. I get on Amazon, I type in liberal books. I go through and I say one star, one star, one star. It doesn't really matter what side of the fence you're on. The fact is, that's just no way to conduct debate. And I think it's very, very disturbing and worrying for democracy. Because people are scared of the internet, a lot of really useful and interesting people aren't going on it. But it will never improve if those people are always f afraid of, for instance, unpleasant comments. You well, know, then, they've, if... they've, they've, got to, they've got to set up their own defences um, uh, for dealing with that type of stuff. Because if they don't, they're going to be left out of a conversation. And it's a really important conversation that's going on online, I, I think. I think we've got to get away from the idea that the internet should be this wild west and people can just type what they like. After all, what you say has consequences, and we've known for thousands of years that decent debate should be moderated and should lack anonymity. Now, we've got to replicate that online if we want to kick out these trolls with their fatuous comments. And if we can do that, we'll have a far more rich environment in which to have online debate. Now, if you don't agree with me, just leave a comment. <laughs>